And what I want to do is I want to show you some of the paths that you can take to be successful here and some of the detours that you want to avoid so that you remain successful here. And I hope that sounds all right with you, all right? Now, with all that stuff being said, let me ask you a question. Who in here has ever been told that you have the potential for greatness? All right? Probably has some cheesy motivational speaker. You are going to be great. You have the potential for greatness. The power within, the power within, right? So you've had people tell you this thing. And so, I have to tell you, whereas you do have the potential for greatness, obviously you do, you also have the opportunity to be average. Now, when it comes out to being average, if you're somebody who's kind of satisfied with being like everybody else, well, congratulations, you're average already. You're good to go. And if that's all right with you, then that's good because that's, that's average, all right? However, if you're somebody, when you hear the word average, and you think about being like everybody else, it just makes you want to, ooh, if you're one of those people, then let me go ahead and give you a little something that you can chew on so that you can think about how you can be great at this experience. And it all starts with setting goals. Now, when it comes down to setting goals for yourself, and I've been a warning, you probably heard your parents say something like this. When it comes down to setting goals for yourself, what really helps is if you set SMART goals. Now, when I say SMART, I don't necessarily mean intelligent. I don't necessarily mean it literally. But what I'm thinking about is an acronym here. SMART being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. If you go ahead to the first page of the booklet that you just got, at the top of the first page, you're going to see exactly what SMART stands for for our terms here, okay? And when it comes out to being SMART, some people are sitting here saying, all right, I'm going to set some goals for myself, so uh, I'm going to make some good grades, and uh, I'm going to join uh, a club. That ain't SMART, man. That's not what we're talking about. No, if you really want to be SMART in the term that we're using, what we're talking about is saying something like, you know what, I'm going to make a 3.4 each of my first two terms. I'm going to join at least two clubs and organizations, and when I join those clubs and organizations, I'm going to work my way to taking on some kind of responsibility, and then in four years, I'll have my degree, I'm going to be out of here. Peace. Now, those are what we call SMART goals, because these are, the, these are things that are kind of specific. And you see, the goals that you create for yourself are going to go ahead and make up what you're going to have on your scorecard. Now, you do realize that you have to keep a scorecard here, right? You see, your scorecard is going to be designed to get you the kind of job you really want to get, get into the grad school that you really want to get. In other words, your scorecard is your resume. When it comes down to having this resume, though, I want to show you a little something, okay? If you look at the bottom of the first page right here, you're going to see three resume samples. Now, I'm going to ask you to play the role of a job recruiter. So let's say that you're somebody who maybe has a business or you're recruiting for a business, and you're going to come here to UNO to talk to some folks. The people at the bottom of the page, they might be UNO students just like you. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and pick out the person who you think has the best resume. And I'm only going to give you 10 seconds, because guess what? When your resume is up for review, when these employers see them, that's all they're going to give you. 10 seconds. Go. That's it, you're done. All right, got a question. Who here picked Angela as the best resume? Who did? <laughs> Somebody was like, man, this is me says I can just see Angela. All right. All right, I'll work with that, all right? So who thinks that uh, Juanita has the best resume? That's interesting. Who thinks that Marcus has the best resume? OK. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to say something that might make you mad, OK? Because you have to kind of look at where, where every resume is strong. Now, Angela, I don't think Angela's half bad. She's a 3A GPA, man, so she's very strong in the classroom. She's the kind of person that a lot of businesses are going to say, whoa, let's take a look at this resume. However, Angela didn't do a whole lot outside the classroom. Now, let's take a look at Marcus. Marcus, um, 
Marcus had a little problem in the classroom at some point, we can say, but Marcus was pretty strong outside of the classroom, so he probably had some strong leadership skills. But then, Juanita, man, Juanita has a pretty good balance, a decent GPA, and also a decent work history. Honestly, all three of these resumes have some pretty specific strengths, so all of them can be deemed a favorite by somebody, to be honest with you. You see, what it comes down to is what exactly a business is going to be looking for from a particular student. So there are particular things that they're going to be looking for from you when you are ready to graduate from UNO. What you have to do is you have to figure out how to make your resume stand out among everybody else's.